when we talk about the chemical burn the first important challenge is what has been associated with burn was it alkali or was it acid so let us see chemical burns can be acid burn or they could be alkali burn subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from prep ladder so let us talk about the third burn which is a chemical burn when we talk about chemical burn when we talk about the chemical burn the first important challenge is what has been associated with burn was it alkali or was it acid so let us see chemical burns can be acid burn or they could be alkali burn so it could be acid burn or it could be alkali burn now which one is more dangerous this is a very age old question but yes acid burns are less dangerous than alkali burns alkali burns are more dangerous what is the reason for this as we know that the acid denatures the protein acid denatures the protein and because of this denaturing of the protein what will happen there is going to be coagulation of the protein so this is very important denaturation of protein will cause coagulation and this coagulation will result in an impermeable layer and this impermeable layer is known as coagulum so this impermeable layer impermeable layer this is referred as coagulum coagulum yes let us move forward now and since it is impermeable this process will be known as this process will be what a self limiting one this will be self limiting next is let us talk about the concept of acid burn this is acid burn now let us talk about alkali burn so acid burn we know that they are going to be self limiting the problem with alkali burn are multiple first of all they don't cause denaturation they cause lysis of protein so there is going to be lysis of protein and because of this lysis of protein the injury the injury depends and depends and depends yes the injury depends and therefore there is more penetration there is more penetration so one thing is there there is no coagulum formation and more deeper penetration and more and more more and more perpetuating injury if you talk about alkali burn the second interesting and important point about alkali burn is they are hygroscopic since they are hygroscopic they are going to absorb the water and since they absorb water they absorb water or moisture there is going to be worsening of dehydration so they increase the level of dehydration the third important point that you have to understand is that the alkalis is the alkalis cause saponification of fat the alkalis are associated with saponification of the fat and since they are associated with saponification of fat they are going to emulsify the fat and hence 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 you are going to have increase heat loss and since there is increase heat loss this is going to result in hypothermia so these are the multiple factors which make alkali burn in fact more dangerous than all the acid burns so let us have a nutshell overview how we are going to manage so whenever you have a patient of chemical burn whenever you have a patient of chemical burn the next thing that you have to understand is how to deal with this immediately wash the wound wash the wound under rapid so wash the wound under running tap water important is it should not be ice cold water it should be normal room temperature yes so running tap water for at least at least at least 30 to 45 minutes 30 to 45 minutes try to understand that if you know that it's an acid burn yes it's okay if you know that it's an alkali burn you can increase this washing time to even 60 minutes to even 120 minutes also so 30 to 45 minutes is the standard time you give for the wound to wash and then you have skin litmus so you will now 
check the skin ph check the skin ph now you have to understand that when we check the skin ph what is the target skin ph the target skin ph is 7 to 7.5 target is 7 to 7.5 if the target is achieved if the target skin ph is achieved what to do yes manage conservatively manage the patient conservatively if the target is not achieved if the target is not achieved then what to do you have to go for debridement and not only debridement after debridement you have to go for skin grafting so debridement plus skin grafting this is what leads to good debridement plus skin grafting let, let us talk on some special type of chemical burns so there are some special chemical burns also let us talk, talk on them so if you talk about special chemical burns the first amongst them is a hf burn hydrofluoric acid burn this is a very interesting case scenario so special chemical burns the first in this is hf hydrofluoric acid burn hf burn hydrofluoric acid burn now this is always an industrial accident because hf hydrofluoric acid in excess is used in the glass industry for making beautiful etchings on the glass so this comes under industrial injury first of all this comes under industrial injury because this is not available everywhere the second is it is dangerous why it is dangerous why it is dangerous try to understand the pathophysiology now whenever you have a burn whenever you have a burn with hf yes so understand this is h and this is f minus so f minus h plus so this hf in the wound will disintegrate into hf h plus and f minus this fluoride has high affinity to bind with the calcium of the body so the calcium of the body binds with this and it forms calcium fluoride it forms calcium fluoride and try to understand then this is exothermic and therefore it is painful so it is exothermic and painful meanwhile as this process is going on what happens the calcium in the body the calcium in the body is soaked by the fluoride and this will result in depleted calcium stores so you have hypocalcemia this hypocalcemia this hypocalcemia will ultimately affect the heart and this will cause arrhythmia so most of the time there is a ventricular fibrillation ventricular fibrillation and this is going to cause a cardiac arrest and therefore the death of the patient so mortality is because of cardiac instability now what to do how to manage this we have to think of an alternative so what is the management if you talk about the management is topical topical calcium gluconate so we have topical 2% to 2.5% calcium gluconate calcium gluconate now what is this topical calcium gluconate is going to do why not iv calcium gluconate this iv calcium gluconate will keep on substituting the calcium which is being lost but as far as the wound is concerned it will not do anything so when you apply it topically if this is the wound which is having the fluoride yes this is the fluoride of the wound the fluoride of the wound and over this you have applied a calcium fluoride yes you have applied a calcium gluconate so calcium of the cream will combine with the fluoride and the same calcium fluoride will be happening and the patient will be experiencing the same pain patient will be experiencing the same pain it is going to be painful which resolves over a span of 5 6 minutes the moment patient is comfortable and says thank you doctor now it's not paining it's good again you apply so repeat this in cycles you have to repeat this in cycles until and unless the application becomes absolutely painful the idea or the logic behind this is to scavenge all the topical fluoride by the topical cream based calcium so this is what is calcium here is going to act like a fluoride scavenger so this is you are going to do you are going to do this repeatedly until and unless so you get a painless application 
रिमेंबर इन द मीन टाइम वेन द कैल्शियम ग्लूकोनेट टॉपिकली वॉज नॉट अप्लाइड इट वॉज द बॉडीज कैल्शियम रिसोर्सेज विच वर बिंग यूज सो आई वी टेन परसेंट कैल्शियम ग्लूकोनेट आई वी टेन परसेंट कैल्शियम ग्लूकोनेट नीड्स टू बी गिवेन ओनली आफ्टर मेजरिंग द बॉडीज कैल्शियम रिजर्व एंड द एम इज टू द एम इज टू रीप्लेनिश द एम इज टू रीप्लेनिश बॉडीज कैल्शियम स्टोर्स बॉडीज कैल्शियम स्टोर्स So now let us talk about another special chemical burn, which is known as a formic acid burn. So we have done hydrofluoric acid burn. We have one more burn, special burn, which is a formic acid burn. There are two, three important points that you need to remember. This is also an industrial category of burn. So this is also an industrial burn. Point number one. The second important point is, it gives you a greenish appearance of the wound. So it is an industrial burn. greenish appearance of the wound greenish appearance of the wound and in simple what is the management the management is the management is hemodialysis 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 is the treatment of choice for these patients so formic acid burn their treatment of choice for them is hemodialysis